What up? What's going on? I'm trying to post this real right quick. <laughs> I'm just put a caption on this, so I don't have to put a title. Oh, here multitasking. Bring it in, bring it in. Hold on. Oh, she right on. Good morning. Who worked out today? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay. See, my people be a one, not 802. Come on, IG, don't play with me. Good morning, What's good morning. On? I don't get that real post. You glow, you glowing and stuff. You glowing. <laughs> You said 8 a.m. I said, okay, now I don't usually, I, I ain't no real morning person, but for you, hey, I'm up. We up. See, you're, you're, what is, what do you, what do you mean by that? So my mornings are usually very quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, me talking to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, me talking to God, me talking to me. And I usually uh, don't talk to anybody until about 10 a.m. Except for my son, you know, he's special. He can like stick his head in the door. Like. He can talk, right. And my right. teeth. You know, my team will jump on a little bit in the morning, but like talking, talking, but you know, it's okay. I just, I'm an extroverted introvert. So I like to store up the energy and then give it all I got. I think that's me. Yeah. I think that's me. I, I don't, between, <laughs> between 7 p.m. <laughs> and all the way to about 5 a.m., I'm like nothing, but. If I think of something like, you know, the, when I be in the gym, that's just when the, the creativity is flowing. I might get excited about something and just hop in a group chat like, yo, I know y'all asleep, but listen, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's 2 a.m. <laughs> right. They hear me huffing and puffing. I know it's 2 a.m., but listen, I was just thinking about what we were talking about. I know they wake up in the morning like, bro. This bro, this bro sleep? Right. This, my, this guy is crazy. So I, just, I, I know you just said, um, I know we're, we're going to get into it in a second, but I, I know you just said uh, that's that's when you talk to yourself in the morning, right? So that, that's like, is that is that your like your is that a routine for that? Is there is that affirmations? What is that? Yeah, I have, I've had probably I am a very ritualistic person, Jay. So I'll just put that out there. I know mm -hmm. some people struggle with morning and evening rituals or finding ways to like integrate what they want to be into their life. Um, mm -hmm. I've been a pretty ritualized person since I was like nine. Right. And so this kind of like practice for me um, just really goes into every part of my life. I learned it from being a professional dancer. Mm -hmm. Right. I learned it that you show up to the class every day. You show up to the ballet bar. You do the plies, even though you've done a million of them already. But you do them in a different way to change who you want to be for the next day. Right. I learned that a long time ago. So I show up to my morning ritual um, to really say, listen, Crystal, what is it you want to partner with, the, with God to do today? Crystal, what is it you did yesterday that is not beneficial for today? What is it and who are you becoming that can actually take form today, right? Like, can I be more patient? Can I um, stick to my um, meal plan, right? Can I, right? Can I um, do the thing that I know is going to actually grow me in the future? Like one step at a time, but I need to check in and have that conversation with myself because I don't want to come into the new day with shame, regret, or like un, untethered expectations, things that I don't really care about, but the world cares about that I'm gonna allow to come in during the day. So I wanna be super clear about who I am and what I'm going for so that when the distractions pop up, I don't get pulled into someone else's expectation and I'm feeding mine constantly. It's so easy for that to happen, right? Oh yeah. So easy to get pulled in the direction. Oh yeah. Cause it seems fun. It seems fun. It seems like an emergency. It seems like you can, you can fix something really quickly. And this other thing you're working on is going to take too long. Yeah. That's yeah. That's been me. So let, let me introduce you. Cause I know we just like dive right off into this. Um, everyone, this is coach crystal. Um, listen, so I know you have an event coming up. We're going to, we're going to talk about that as well, but <clears throat> today's live mainly is about getting the vision. I'm gonna show you my vision board before we get okay. into it. Too. Don't get too excited because <laughs> when I when I <laughs> when I show you, you're gonna be like, no. This is about getting the vision off the board and into your life. 
right? Yeah. Okay, so before we, let me let me show you my vision board. Okay, this is expose, y'all. I feel excited. I'm, I feel like this is a privilege. So I had, you know what? Most of this has come. This is here. The vision is here. But yeah. I did have Rihanna on here, and sorry, yeah. No, no, not her. Like you know. Oh, okay. I was like, I like the, vi the oh. vibes, though. Okay, the vibes. The vibe. Yes. I had to take that off of there, but you know, right on time, you know what I'm saying? So other than that's where you see that little glue right there. I had to put something. Okay. So it's not done. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Not done. Okay. But you know what I'm saying? I kind of started my ADD. No, no, that just that AD, listen, I have of course I have ADHD. Like, give me a break. But I was born I was born in the seventies where nobody is diagnosing that. They just told right. gave me and told me to do other stuff. Pay attention, yeah, yeah. But you know, I got some magazines here. I might just finish it up today. Maybe okay. after this conversation, I may just jump on. I might just post it and tag you. Yeah. Now, I was, I was gonna get bold one day and put some hundred dollar bills on there, but I was like, bro, you know what? I might just still do that. But for now, I got the dollars on there. I, I was wondering. Like okay, I was wondering why I was why I was little little bills, but little yeah, bills right. make, little bills make big impact. That's okay. I think I was thinking like in the past and I was just like, I don't really hang out with the same people. And at the, I was kind of thinking like, okay, I don't want to, you know, have a, have a little gathering then come back and look at my vision board and my hundred dollar bills is gone out of my vision for some reason, but <laughs> okay. I'm not, I might okay. go ahead and put them all there. So okay. vision, vision board, um, yeah. vision board doesn't just have to be like the RC craftsy thing though, right? No, no, no. So, okay. you know, we talk about boards, right? Like people, um, the thing, the, let's do the science behind this, right? The reason that social media is so impactful is because people see it so much every day, right? What we see saturates our subconscious mind. What we do with our subconscious mind is really things that pop up as reactions, responses on autopilot. So vision boards are created so that you can actually saturate yourself in a visual representation of the life you want to create for yourself, right? So it's there to be a visual representation. Now, here's what happens, Jay. I mean, I don't want to call out anybody. This is not personal. This is just what happens. I love the complexity of human beings, and that's why I do this work. Most people get super excited. They make these vision boards. They go to vision board parties. They bring it home. They're like, oh, my God, I'm about to get it. Look at me. Look at me. And then they put it somewhere that they, first of all, don't see it every day. Right. Then they start unfolding laundry. Laundry goes in front of it. Um, you know, it's not in a place where they actually sit and engage with themselves. So it's not help. They're not seeing it every day. They're still seeing other people's lives on social media more than they're seeing the life they want to create for themselves. So if that saturation factor is not happening with the board, then there's no way it can come to fruition. Now, when we think about getting the vision off the board and into your life, you have to actually be a little bit systematic, right? So there is a structure for just about everything, right? And whether we want to believe it or not, or whether we want to get stuck in finding a way to do it our way, but your life is basically broken down into four quadrants, health and wellness, love and relationships, time and money, freedom, and your vocation or vocari. Now on that board, you have all of it there. You just haven't figured out- Wait, wait hold on, say those four again. Okay, <laughs> so- Let me tell- <laughs> Every time I do a live with someone that's fucking dope, the health just gets thrown in there. Do y'all see the pattern? Okay. I want to hear it again. Okay. <laughs> health, health and wellness. Okay. Love and relationships. Okay. Time and money freedom. Mm -hmm. And your vocation or vocari. We in our okay. practice call, call it a vocari. Because vocation just really means I'm going to exchange some time for money doing this skill. A vocari means I'm going to bring my gift and calling to life for the benefit of myself and others, right? And so once we figure, it out, figure that out and where the things on your vision board go in terms of each category, then we can actually isolate the objections that we have to the growth, right? So we can say, you know, oh, well, you know, I was trying to do this, but you know, it don't really fit. In it. But if we look at like your health and wellness quadrant, I tell people all the time in my health and wellness quadrant, I was trying to work on my you know, my, my value system for myself in fitness, right? And I think I told you this, like I've been a professional dancer for 20 years. I got paid to work out. I have to retool my understanding of value for my own body to make it a priority for me, right? So I had to think about that in terms of how that then fuels the other parts of my life. So first thing I started doing was like, let me get my water intake right. But in my other love and relationships category, my goal was to be a patient, listening, honest, authentic parent. So lo and behold, when I stopped being dehydrated, I became a better parent. So wait, are you saying that 
by improving in this health aspect. <laughs> I'm just asking a question. Of course. Of course. It's you one of the improving your health essentially yeah. improves your overall quality of life. Of course, because you're okay. you know, it's like you're not gonna drive a expensive car and not take care of it because the ride is gonna get bumpy. Right. 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 The expensive car is expensive asset over here, right? Mm -hmm. So when I take care of it, it takes care of everything else that's in my responsibility realm, in my vision realm, in everything that I do. Yeah. And you know what what we're talking about in terms of health is overall health, right? Physical, spiritual, mental, emotional. And so right. you can't be healthy spiritually or emotionally if the health if you're not taking care of yourself, right? The the confidence to be intuitively sound and emotionally grounded comes from confidence in yourself, not being highly esteemed by others, right? So confidence basically means that I keep my commitments to myself. I confide within, right? Confidence. I say to myself, I'm going to do something. If I do it, that continues to build my health and success momentum, which makes me believe in myself and my own power more, which means I can take the thing off the board and put it in my life. I think there's a consequence to, I know you just mentioned the confidence comes from within self. You yeah. shouldn't be looking externally. I think there's a major consequence to looking externally, expecting others to. Yeah. Listen, I'm, and I'm not going to listen, y'all. I'm not, I'm not the guru on the heel here. Let's be clear. I'm a little black girl from Kinston, North Carolina. Dark skinned girls didn't even get cute till the early 90s when five, like I've battled with my own like beauty, self esteem, uh -huh. and I was in an industry for 20 years that was super subjective that said, Oh, well, you know, your leg don't really go high enough, or you know, you, you kind of, you know, maybe your, your body type is not what we're looking for, right? So I understand that it's hard to create that value structure for yourself, but I'm just saying, once we have a clear vision of if that value is intact, what it looks like, and that's what's probably on your board, right? If the value structure is intact, if I am operating at the highest form of discipline, which is self-love, then I can see who I am and what I'm becoming. And if I can keep that in the forefront of my mind, then the distractions can fade away. I think, I think, I think putting it on the board is like an easy task for some. It's so easy to, because I have a, um, like a Google, I had to do a recording for, so I actually, doing a vision board is a part of my 90 day program, by the way. <laughs> It's like one of the first steps, doing a 90-day awesome. vision board. Um, awesome. But I have like a recording where I show them how to do one on the Google Doc. You know, entrepreneur is always on go. And I find that it's, it's so easy for us to Google image and paste, 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 or cut out. But I think that it's hard for a lot to really believe it. Yeah, because the doing has taken over the being. If we can get it done, we think we've done something. But if we haven't installed it into our consciousness, then we're not being the thing we're, we've done. Right, the doing just keeps piling up. Right, check, 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 check. But right. it doesn't translate into the being because we haven't integrated it. We don't have a value system for it. Right, like I only have two core values. I come from a nonprofit background as well, where you know when people talk about core values, they list fifteen things that are idealisms. I got two. Check, mm -hmm. love and trust. I don't do anything I don't love, and I don't work with people I don't trust. Right, and it doesn't mean love and like are very different. Right, it's the same thing between discipline and action. Very different. Right. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that I don't have to like it, but if it is building me and it's building the people I love and it's going to get me to the overall vision, then I love its outcome so I can do it. Right. So installing that type of mechanism in the background for value changes what we get done. I think the, I think it's, I guess from a, I'm speaking like from a vision standpoint too, yeah. like it's, it's so easy to visualize it, but it's like, ah, can I, can I really, yeah. Can I really make that happen? Yeah. I remember I remember when I was stocking shelves uh, a couple years ago, 2014, I was still going to personal training school. And I remember some days some of my coworkers would ask me, they'd be like, you know, are you good? Are you okay? And I'd be at work so zoned out, I would not be there. Like my body would be there. I'd be in the same routine of uh, working. Uh, mm -hmm. But my mind would be like on set at a video shoot. I'm like, yo, this video shoot is going to be dope. I don't know when it's going to happen, but... I'm going to be on set at a video shoot, shooting my workout video. And I mean, it's been years later. I've done, I do them every day. I did one at 2 a.m. yesterday, you know? So it's just like, 
once your mind is really, really there and you're committed, the body's going to follow. Yeah. I believe that. Exactly. I mean, it's psychologically proven. We're not like, this is not something that is like woo woo, you know, out right. there. Or, right it's psychologically proven that if the mind focuses on something it happens right that's what we do when you when it's it's really the bless our hearts it's it's really the mechanism that we're trying to do when we ask a little kid what do you want to be when you grow up but we then don't listen we say what do you want to be when you grow up what about this what about that and we start feeding the answer right. before we listen to the answer but that practice actually get, keeps us from listening to ourselves. Because then when someone says, like, when I ask my clients, what would you love? They start telling me what's possible. And I don't care what's, I'm not asking you what you think right. is possible, what you think you can do within your small, meager means right now. I'm asking right. you, what would you love, right? And so without that initial permission to say your own gift, your own intuition, we kind of start shutting down early. No limitations. You got to break those limitations. It's kind of like the same thing when I... I'm consulting. I'm like, okay, what do you want to accomplish? Well, it'd be nice if I could lose five pounds. Like, I didn't ask you what would be nice. I right. asked you, what do you want to accomplish? You know, yeah. and it's just like, I've helped my clients accomplish certain things when it comes to weight loss goals. But then I've heard other people say like, oh, it's, it's impossible. And I'm like, it's not impossible. I've done it over and over, you know? So it's just like your belief system. Yeah, nothing is impossible. I tell my clients, right. you know, your family might think you're crazy. Mm. Tell me, we good. Right. right. There's, probably, there's nothing you can tell me that I think it's like, come on, you're talking to, again, a little brown girl from a town of like this many people uh, with two parents who didn't go to college. And I've seen almost the entire world because I can twirl like anything is possible. Let's talk about it. So, so visualizing and getting that vision from the board into your life. Yeah. Uh, in my experience, I know you just mentioned you're, you're very humble. I get it. But our experience makes us experts in this arena, okay? Yes. Respectfully, yeah. <laughs> in my experience of me and hundreds of other clients, I mm -hmm. find that changing your life requires some form of detachment from certain things. Yeah. Can you give your take on that? Yes. I think here's the thing. Okay. There's something that you're born to do that other people are not here to do. So a lot of times we're trying to be our full authentic selves and bring other people along or ask them to do it with us. Now, I, as someone who loves people, right, I just have to say that I love people like to a fault, right? Mm -hmm. So um, many of my um, endeavors in business and art have been about bringing other people along and it has stagnated the growth of the vision, right? So I'll just say that out loud just to be totally transparent. But what happens when we do that is that the vision becomes muddy. It starts to be about how do we get it to um, help or translate to other people rather than what is it? right and when we're not focused on the actual vision we deceive ourselves into thinking again that the doing is actually getting us somewhere when honestly we're peddling in place right and so what i would say is that when we think about the vision clearly right and this takes time too y'all this is not an epiphany moment mm. right this is not like i woke up one day and boom I, you know what that's called that's called a good idea Right. A good idea is <laughs> not a vision. Right. Right. A good idea is like, we, we all have good ideas, but a vision is something that continues to nag at you, continues to beg you to grow, tells you that you need help from things that are bigger than you. It is something that actually pulls you towards a different understanding of yourself. And it can be on the board and it can begin with you and your ide ide ideas about who you want to be, your visuals your visualization, but the visualization, again, is an activity that might be the foundation for the vision, but the vision takes action. And that vision could, that vision can sometimes change along the way a bit, right? Or maybe get, or, or maybe get more clear along exactly. the way. Yeah. Usually when I start with my clients in our 12 week program, right? Like it's like, they're like, oh yeah, I want to do this. And by the time they get to the end, they're like, oh yeah, that, I, that sounded good in the beginning. Right. Now I know what I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. Because you got to get past layers of fear. You got to get past layers of unforgiveness. You got to like start peeling back that onion to really hear yourself, right? right clearly. Because I find that I, I, mean, I remember when I first like quit my job, I was just like, oh man, I just want to start a gym in my garage. 
I started shaving my garage. I'll be happy. All I want to do is, you know, make this much a month. And like, five years later, like, those that small, I'm like, man, I could not stay there. But at the time, that was like the biggest goal, biggest vision for me. Yeah. So it changes. Exactly. And the thing about visioning is that it's a system, right? Like we've heard this before. Success is not a secret. Success is a system. So it doesn't mean you build one vision for your life and that's what you do forever. It means it's going to accelerate your progress. So you need to understand the process of visioning so you can do it over and over and over again, right? Like for people who aren't familiar. So I started as a dancer. I went to school to be a dance teacher. Way, 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 way back. I started dancing because I got dropped off at the wrong place in a carpool. I wasn't even supposed to be at a dance class. I was supposed to be at a piano lesson, right? So first of all, let's really be clear that the thing you might be meant to do is not, is nowhere in the scope of what you're, planning for right yeah. so got dropped up at the wrong place ended up you know being on the pageant circuit for a year that's how I paid for my way to go to college went to college went to college for dance and my parents who didn't go to college were like well what else are you gonna go for I mean what else are you gonna do I was like okay I'll get a degree in business and did both of those at the same time because I knew I didn't think in my heart of hearts I was never going to be good enough to be a professional dancer so I was going to go back to my hometown and be the first black dance teacher and so my father died before I graduated from college, kind of changed my trajectory. I got on a plane the day after uh, graduation, flew to New York, started building a career on relationships, right? Went back and forth, toured the world, w- worked with iconic people in the dance industry, like a, a career I could have never, ever, ever imagined for myself, right? And then offered to teach at a college, which is something that, Don't you know, I thought me. I was going to be. You're bad. Huh? You're back. You paused on oh, me. Oh, that froze. It paused on me. Uh, um, God, uh, but you learned, but you, you, gosh, I can relate. I can, I did not, so I did not come back to Atlanta for fitness. Like a couple years ago, yeah. like especially after the Navy, if someone had told me I'd be a fitness coach, what? No. I came back to Atlanta for like music engineering. I, I came back here with like, and even before I went to school for music engineering, I let someone in my family talk me into, Going, going to go get this under your belt, you know, in case the economy ever go bad. I was just like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Looking back, I'm like, <laughs> man, I wish I would have just like ran at this goal early on. Like, that's what I wish. But yeah, spent nine, ten months at, at some school getting a certificate under my belt and then went to another school, went to music engineering school and found out a week in, just not even what I like doing. Right. But I don't no. regret I don't regret any of, of those things because I learned something from each of those environments and situations. And then I found literally found fitness. Found it. Okay. Yeah. It found you. Yeah. <laughs> right. But then found all it, those found things the obsession. Yeah, all the things you have been doing have been building the discipline for you to create the foundation of what you offer other people. You had to like learn right. it for yourself. Right. You know, right. I'm a I'm through and through like you know when I became a professor I was really um it was really because I was actually ready at that point I knew enough to teach some people god bless them and this is no shade to anybody out there who is starting their own business and wants to be a coach or anything but you gotta have a lot you gotta have a wealth of experience to usher other people into anything because people are complicated you got to have different angles. You got to have different understandings to be able to bring their, them to, to the place where you are. But you can't just be knowing it all yourself because that's not, that's not good for anybody else. That's just for you. Right. And you cannot take someone somewhere that you've never been to. <laughs> someone that we were talking about coaching the other day. And I'm like, man, there's a lot of coaches that I've had people reach out to me like, hey, I just got in shape. I want to be a trainer. I'm like, bro, get, getting yourself in shape and helping someone else change their body and mind is two totally different it's a whole skill set you winged your way to accomplishing something congratulations but to teach it to someone else that first you have to learn the science behind it and then you have to make sure that you're mentally and emotionally ready to pour into not just one person we're talking about one client but multiple people and you know we need to that that needs to be talked about a lot because the dangers of choosing the wrong i've chosen the wrong coach before as well Mm. you need to make sure that you need to make sure that you're choosing someone that has been to where you're trying to go and you know one thing i tell my clients a lot of times and i get this question a lot like man why do you coach entrepreneurs why do you coach you know lady entrepreneurs i'm like 
honestly, I have invested so much into my mental health. I've been, I've taken it far when it comes to my emotions. I can yeah. meet my clients where they are. Not even, like physically can change the physical body. That's easy. Yeah. That's the mental, being able to meet someone where they mentally are, really know what they're going through and then pull them out of that and get them to where they're trying to go. A lot of coaches can't do that because they haven't healed they don't they don't know what forgiveness is yeah nothing like we yeah. see the physical body or in in we can it's financial coaches we see the you know we see the glitz and the glam but it's like mentally this person doesn't have it they've never right. been where you're trying to go they don't understand the dangers of choosing the wrong coach yeah yeah and i mean again like i mean if you if you are out there looking for someone to usher you in your transformation Make sure not only they don't have to be exactly where you want to go, but they have, right. to, have to be vulnerable enough to share their process with you. If someone is telling you everything they can get for you, rather than telling you how they got to this perspective, then that might be a red flag, right? If someone's not vulnerable enough to tell you right. their process, then, you know, maybe that's not what you want. And I don't mean like telling you the step-by-step -step of how they're going to get you there. That's the, that's a formula, Right. They, if they have a structure and a formula, but if they can't tell you how they how they've done it or are continuing to do it in their lives, then you might just want to check in about that. Right, right. Yeah. Look, my first, my I chose my first coach off the glitz and the glam. Had mm -hmm. a nice gym, a Lexus outside. I'm like, man, it, he about to he about to coach me in the game. <laughs> 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 through my through my whole savings, through my whole savings, like this is I, I can't fail. Yeah, let me tell you. Let me tell you what I found out that week in seven days. Seven, my life went from promising to horrible in seven days. Wow. That yeah. So that that next day, I showed up to the gym, SpongeBob smile, ready to like, all right, ready to learn. Okay, ready to learn how to get clients. You know, I got the I got the keys to the gym. It's about to be crazy in here. He's nowhere to be found. I'm, I call him like, hey, where you at? He's like, oh, I'm at work. I'm like, at work? What do you, what do you mean? It's like, yeah, you know, I work security. I'm like, I thought you own this gym. No, nah, you know, I don't really own it. You know, I just kind of like been, you know, trying to pay it off. Like, okay, that's not bad. It's cool. I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm still in the game. It's all good. Then I'm like, you know what? Let me just walk around, do what I thought was marketing, which is a whole nother conversation. Let me do what I thought was marketing. Let me just walk around this neighborhood and, you know, see if I can like knock on some doors, meet some new clients. I'm walking, I, I walk one block over and there's a personal training gym that are like the gym that I had invested into was like a warehouse. You could not tell it was a gym. It had nice equipment on the inside. So the gym that was one block over was a nice gym inside, outside, had personal training on the outside and it faced all of the traffic. And I'm calling him like, bro, you didn't tell me a gym, right? But I'm saying all this to say, yeah, I, I ran myself into debt. Like I ran myself into debt, like like six seven months, mm -hmm. but I had to take responsibility for that. Yeah. You know, had to take responsibility for choosing the wrong coach. So, um, yeah, but but not not to get off not not to get off subject. I, I know these conversations go everywhere. I, I definitely want to make sure we give give yeah. the uh, the listeners That's right on par because part of actually building your vision and getting it off the board is making decisions, but making mm -hmm. decisions that are based on the vision. The vision, once it is intact, becomes a reverse engineering document for every decision you make, every choice you make, what time I wake up, who I talk to, who's on my phone, who's on my feed, what I'm listening to in the car. Once you create the vision, it actually dictates all the things you need to do to bring that to fruition. But we got to be saturated in it, like on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Like, like our event tomorrow is really to help people clarify and actually write the vision like it's on it's workshop it's live we're doing work all three hours we work it right so it's not about like oh I'm, I'm coming with my vision tell me how to make it happen it's like let's be clear that you actually have the right vision right yeah so you, you feel a lot of people think they have a vision but it's not the correct one it's not right uh, i think they have a lot of aspirations they have nothing to do with them mm, explain well a lot of people have on their vision board their idea of success. Now that idea of success is probably mostly engineered by their diet, their daily intake of engineered thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. That's their diet, their daily intake of engineered thoughts, daily intake of watching other people's lives, daily intake of listening to the success mantras. Right. On the gurus right. like 
daily intake of the, their kids asking for things. So they continue to think about how to get rather than who to be. Right? And the how to get versus that. the who to be is hands More down. focus on how can I get these things instead of like, who do I need to become, right? Yes. yes. Let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Let, right. Like, who do I, I need yeah. to become? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, okay, so let's take this for example, or you can go back to my dance career. I did not know what it meant to be a professional dancer, Jay. Like, I had already told myself I was never going to be good enough to do that. So by the time I was getting paid to be a professional dancer, I was just learning how to take class. And for those of you who don't know what that means, in the dance world, training is called taking class. Even if you're a professional, you still take class every day, right? It's how you train. So I had been performing in class. I had been going to class and doing the thing that the teacher did and getting it done, but I wasn't taking the information and letting it change my body so that I could be better tomorrow, right? I was just getting it done for the moment. Right. And so when we think about the how to get it done, it's momentary success. When we mm. think about who we need to be, oh, I need to be stretching at night. I need to be doing this for myself. I need to be getting some cardio in on the side. I need to be like watching the other dancers in the room to know how to grow my skill set and find my own gaps. I need to be able to isolate my own gift and then cultivate my weaknesses. I need to be able to do that for myself. Right. And so that's the who am I becoming? Right. That's the difference between I can get it done or I can become someone who not just gets it done, but understands what it takes to keep getting, keep evolving in the doing. That's what I try to explain to a lot of like the entrepreneurs yeah. when it comes to like my discipline. I tell them, like, listen, it's not like I have a meal plan to follow today. It's Friday. Yeah. P pizza would be nice. Wings would be nice. Yeah. A cheeseburger would be nice. It'd be nice. And you know what? I can have it. If I yeah. was to have one of those things today, it wouldn't ruin my goals. No. Physically, it wouldn't ruin me. Mentally, I'm not okay with it. And I'll get into that in a second. But mm -hmm. the reason that I'm motivated to really stay on track is because I tell myself every day, make sure that you are consistently becoming an example of what you want to attract. Correct. You, attra you attract what you are. So it's like, if you allow laziness into your life, if you allow negativity into your life, you have a plan to follow and you decide not to follow it, you're essentially saying, hey, look, this is what I bring me clients that aren't going to follow the, the plan. Bring yeah. me people that are going to say they're going to do things and not do them. And that's where the discipline comes in. Like, yeah. I understand you attract success by becoming success. So that's what really keeps me motivated when it comes to at least the, the physical and the mental routine. That's what keeps yeah. me on track. And that's what keeps me looking for bigger challenges. Yeah. The other part of that, Jay, is that if you don't keep your word to yourself, you tell yourself that you can't trust yourself. So you don't trust other people. And other people don't trust you. Right. And that's important for that's important for our confidence, too. Because, like, in order for me to have the confidence to go live and talk about motivation, go live and talk about investing into yourself, yeah. go live and talk and talk about trusting and uh, emotional healing. Like I have to do these things in real life. Exactly. I have to do them because exactly. I, and, and this is what I tell a lot of other entrepreneurs. It's like, listen, you can decide not to do the hard things. That's fine. But if you don't do them and you don't conquer these challenges, you're not really going to have the confidence to go for what you want to go for because right. deep down in the back of your mind, you don't feel you deserve it. No, and I deep, know. Deep down, you've already proven that you don't follow through. Right. Right. Yeah. So but, it's it's like, I mean, it, it scares me a little bit, to be honest. Like, it literally scares me when it comes to, to discipline. Like, and call me crazy, that's fine. But I am literally afraid to get far off my discipline and motivation because it's like, I don't ever want to get to this point where I've just like veered off of becoming exactly who I want to attract. I want more success. I want more successful people. I want more successful opportunities. And I feel like when you are operating on a certain level, you're, you're following a certain path, you're walking down this, this path, that's great. But the minute that you decide to veer off of that, okay, you're going in a different route. And if you're going in a different route, these opportunities and these successful people that you're meant to meet along this path, you're not even going down that path anymore. You're going down somewhere else and you're about to meet a totally different group of people different opportunities that are not even meant for you yeah i mean that's what that's the crux of the the saying that we hear about it's a slippery slope right because once we veer off the pathway that's ours 
then we start sliding into other people's realities. When we start sliding into other people's realities, then we start convoluting our own thought process. We start bringing things into our path where they don't belong there. When we bring them in, even if we think they're valuable, they can still become an obstacle or a stumbling block because they weren't meant to be there, mm. right? You ever talk to someone, and I, and I know you do, I already know the answer, but <laughs> you ever talk to someone I don't talk to that you. in passing, <laughs> <laughs> You ever talk to someone in passing, like you had maybe at a store mm -hmm. and, you know, just kind of spark up conversation and, you know, we're goal driven individuals. Yeah. So like, look, we could talk goals all day, right? Like we okay, can get but, off of here. I have to talk about Emmanuel Acho because we, I can't even use the word goals. I don't, I can't say okay. it. And I'm burnt. Okay. Up. But we'll so talk we, ahead, we can ahead. talk vision success uh -huh. all day, right? We can get off here and have this conversation. Yes. And I find that, you know, in passing, I may be at a store or restaurant, for some reason, the conversation of what someone wants to, what they wanted to accomplish comes up. Yeah. And to me, that's one of my biggest motivators when it comes to keep, you know, taking that vision, keeping the vision alive, making sure I bring it to life is because I've seen the face of regret on other people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have you experienced that through conversation? Yeah, all the time. I mean, imagine you come up to me, you say, hey, what do you do? And I say, I'm a dancer. And then, you know, once you realize, if you're a dude, once you realize that I'm not going to hand you a card and we're not going to the club, it's some tickets in a theater. That, okay, once you get past that part, you right. go, oh, that's different, right? And so for most people, different means, um, different starts to create judgment, mm -hmm. right? And so let's say you say hello to me. They go, hey, what you doing? I go, I'm a, I'm a dancer. I you know, tour, I dance, you know. Like, oh, wow, for real, like, all the time, like that's your real job. That in itself plants the seed for someone else. Listen, that, listen, they hold They say on. to themselves, oh my God, <laughs> I don't do nothing that I love. Like, that's not my dream. And then the conversation sparks, right? But the thing is that I'm always telling right. people, you can always revamp your regret. You can always rewrite the regret. The content Ooh. of your life is the curriculum for my evolution. My mentor, Mary Morris, she taught me that a long time ago, right? And as an educator, that's real clear to me because content is structured into learning goals. Learning goals have objectives. Objectives have action and impact. And that's what we want to be clear about, right? Everything I've done is very valuable in this moment because it in influences the choices I'm going to make that are going to create the next moment. Revamp your regret. You don't drop that book. I better see that on a book. <laughs> I'll catch the Uber. 30-day devotional is coming out by the end of the year. Okay. Look, we're going to get back on when you do. We're going to yeah. get back on when you drop it. Okay. I was in the Uber. I was catching the Uber a couple uh Was it an Uber book? It was, it was not. <laughs> it was, it, you probably saw the picture I posted, yeah, too. Yeah, we just showed me out. We just showed me out. <laughs> <laughs> I was catching the Uber, and I get in the Uber, so this guy's like, um, I was going to meet my brother you know, somewhere. And I, I, you know, I rarely go out, but I'm like, you know, I'm gonna go out. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> so I'm in an Uber. He's like, Hey, you know, where you going? I'm like, going to have a, you know, a couple of drinks. My brother like, okay, cool. So we you're like, what do you do? You know, I'm like, I'm a coach. He's like, okay, cool. He's like, what do you, you know, what type of coach? I'm like online, you know, fitness. He's like, fitness as in like weight loss. I'm like, okay, who do you coach? Women. So you coach women online? I'm like, yeah. He's like, like, like you help them lose weight? Yes. But you don't meet them in a the gym? No. How do you do that? No, I'm just like, like, it's a long story. I don't like, <laughs> and I have had these conversations with other trainers too. Like, you don't, have, you don't, you run your whole business online. How do you get, I'm just like, they're not, and I realized they're not asking because they really want to know it's like this, like, oh, that's impossible. It's like, it's not impossible. I've spent, it's taken me some years. Yeah. It's taken years to put this in place, but I knew it could, I knew I could, ha I knew it could happen. I knew that I could be successful at it, you know? Yeah. So I get but it. The regret in that moment, Jay, is not even about what you're doing or the comparison between their lifestyles. It's, oh my God, I don't know what it is I'm supposed to be doing. I am not clear what my gift is. There is nothing that I can imagine that was of my own creation that's beyond what I'm doing right now. And that is where the real, um, inspiration and action from me doing this work comes from is because I'm afraid that if people keep forgetting who they are, then the world that we live in is going to become more scarce, more enslaved to whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to have less free people in the world 
Like part of my value system in doing this work is uncovering people's intuitive vision so that people in the world can be free. When people in the world feel free, they don't feel the need to enslave other people or have power over other people. And I need my child to grow up in a world where people are free so he could be free too. Like I need that. <laughs> when I used to, when I was like, you know, going through whatever transition I was going through in my twenties and all yeah. the screw ups, you know, and I used to hear the talk about, you know, everyone has a purpose and, and, you know, it sounded good at the time, but I was like, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do, right? I, but I, <laughs> once I, you know, once I had that, that, like, like you said, it kind of like, I, I call it like an annoying feeling. Just like, I cannot get away from this thought that I'm supposed to be doing something <clears throat> better. You know, I left my apartment um, in Virginia w once I, you know, um, honorably transitioned out of the Navy. Yeah. Um, I stayed there working as a civilian. I was making good money. I, and I talk about this in my book too, that I'm working on. <laughs> I was making good, I paid all my bills in one week. So yes. those other checks, I used to go shopping, hit the club and I was okay, but I was not happy. Right. I was lit, I was just not happy. And, and something kept like, man, this is not life. Like you're meant for something and it's not this. You go not to work, you you make your money. You, like, look, it was that movie Groundhog Day. It was like every uh, single day. That's how I started to build. I'm like, <laughs> like, no. And I remember, I remember, um, you know, telling one of my, my friends at the time that I was like hanging around, yeah. like, yo, I got to get out of here. I have to leave. And he's like, bro, you tripping, you tripping. I'm just like, I'm leaving in like a week. Yeah. And he's like, nah, you're not. And I sat there and I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm leaving in five days. Yeah. And I, I sat and I was like, you know what? Three days I can get out of here. And I promise you that, that went to like right now. I was like, I <laughs> Like, you tripping, you tripping, right. <laughs> you tripping. I'm like, I'm out of here. I'm yeah. gone. I, I packed my car. Now, this was a this was one mistake I made, and I love to talk about it. I regret not turning my keys in to like the lease off. I left my keys in there and trusted. I was like, yo, take my take my furniture, you know, take my keys to the to lease and up. Listen, yeah. that why. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only mistake. Look, and I talk about that in my book too. I love talking about my screw ups, yeah. but 20 something thinking I had the perfect plan. That's the only thing. But I left. I left and I came came back here to Atlanta and I struggled. And yeah. I remember the, the the same, you know, person that was telling me, like, man, you tripping, you crazy. Once he knew I was not budging, he was just like, Okay, look, if you leave, you cannot come back here. And he was like, I'm not saying this in like a mean way. He was like, bro, if like you feel like you're supposed to be going to do something else, if you do this, you can't come back here. Yeah. And, I, and I still message him to this day. In fact, I have to interview him for my book. But I remember plenty of times where I was struggling, struggling, like sleeping in a car, check to check, you know, overdraft fees, the whole nine. And I was <laughs> just like, I remember he, like, bro, you cannot come back here, yeah. you know? So I get it, you know, and, and I believe that everybody's meant for something. And, Definitely. you know, I'm passionate about that when I talk about that transition or, or where I was, where my mindset was in that place. But it's just like, if you feel like you're meant for something, I don't care how crazy it sounds. It doesn't mean that you, I'm not telling anybody to quit their job. I'm not telling anyone to do yeah. that. You yeah. know, I'm not telling anybody to do that. But if there is something that you're passionate about doing, it doesn't matter. Like there are guys that, that, and that that own like hot dog stands and they're like multi-millionaires doesn't like you can literally get you know and I, when i say money money's not going to make you happy but i know a lot of people like to equate that to success you right. can literally become successful doing anything so if you're passionate about something don't give up on that no exactly don't give up on it and just y'all really in this noisy hectic oversaturated world it just takes a little time for you to stop the noise and listen to yourself. Mm. That's all. You might not feel like you're ready to take the leap right now, but at least identify what that leap would look like on the other side. Be clear about what it is that you would really love so that when you do get the opportunity, when the confidence and courage does wake you up at two o'clock in the morning, you're like, I'm not doing that anymore. Then you have the energy, the the aspiration, and the motivation to take that next step. It's always a break. It's like a breaking point, though, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, but see, the thing is, we, the, the thing with um, that I would love, right? Like, this is the thing. It's like, we're not trained into taking, into taking incremental risk. In our minds, it's all or nothing. It's never a zero-sum game. You can work your way into your genius 5% today, 10% tomorrow, until you get to there and you're like, oh, shoot, I done changed my whole life. Watch yeah. out. Prepare to be sick of me. Right. right. All that. But you don't have to like jump ship, like you said, mm -hmm. and quit your job tomorrow. The thing is you have to do tomorrow is that you got to get clear with yourself about what that looks like, because the only way you can know how to take the next right step for you is to be clear on the vision. So you don't take get distracted by all the options. You only want to step into opportunity. Options are there to distract you and keep you stuck in another rut of doing, doing, doing. The opportunity channels your transformation. I think there's a major consequence to not being able to see an opportunity when it presents yeah. itself as well. Sure. You know what right. happens? It's like you get an opportunity comes up and what starts to happen is this. This is the fear creeping up, like blocking mm -hmm. your whole view. And then you're like, oh, no, it's not even there. I'm good. <clears throat> right. Right. It's right. like it starts creeping up from the inside. You're like, oh, my God, I could do this tomorrow. Then, But what about your mama? What about you? Next thing you know, you're like, oh, there's nothing there. We're good. It's sad. It's sad. <laughs> it's, it's, sad. it's sad because we have these. I I know you have these conversations yeah. like, through consulting. It's like yeah. I understand what you want to accomplish. Yeah, I can see the vision yeah. for you. It's it's sad when you see the vision for someone. You see their potential. They're just like, no, I don't want. I'm like, okay. I mean, but I like, think that's where I mean. <sighs> I was talking to a client this past week, and they were like. How do other people do this when they don't have a coach? I said, I don't know. I actually don't know. Because friends and family members, they have too much data on your past to help you get to your future. So when you don't have someone that can see you holistically in the yeah. vision from the perspective that you need them to, it, you can't talk to them. Like right. you asked me this before, like, does the trans transformation require isolation? Isolation, I think, for some people is a little bit too strong of a word because they it, it's harsh. But it does require a sifting of your energy. Like if you think about washing off grapes in a colander, right? The vision is the grapes in the colander. When you start running it through the process of rinsing, when you start running people through your vision, when you start doing some accounting of who's aligned and who's not aligned, everybody's not going to stay. Right. Right? And it doesn't mean that you got to take yourself and remove yourself. You just got to keep being you and they will fall away. <laughs> I'm more comfortable nowadays just saying like, this isn't working. <laughs> I didn't used to be that guy. I was not that guy. So like right. <laughs> entrepreneurship will change you. Right. But yeah. and how you do one thing is how you do everything. I've, I've conquered every other aspect of my life, even, even fatherhood. And, and I know I'm not like, I don't, I'm not one of these guys on the line every day telling his business, but I will in my book and y'all got to buy that, right? But Y'all, please read this book. <laughs> please read this damn book. <laughs> but, what you know, one of the things that I like to talk about the, to the fellas is just like, you know, when y'all talk about the baby mom, baby dad, like that was, I was in that situation. I had the drama and everything, but learning to um, isolate myself, isolate and have these self conversations and make decisions and then say, Hey, okay, we can come back to this. It allowed me to conquer my emotions. Yeah. And when I conquered my emotions in order to get in shape, then it taught me how to conquer my emotions in business. And then it also taught me how to conquer my emotions in my personal life. Yeah, and yeah. all of it came, all of it came full circle Yeah, as well, a result yeah. of doing that. I mean, being honest with yourself is not easy because it's not always the you that you think you you are, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, real talk from the other side of, I've gone through the, the parenting struggles, through, you know, the courts, through the, all the things, right? Like, yeah. <clears throat> and what I realized deep down, ladies, and I'm just gonna, you know, just pour this out there because I keep it 100, you know, you come to vision. Throw it out there. You, you hear a lot of other stories. But the real thing is that I had to realize that I had some deep father wounds that, kept continuing to make me choose the same type of person who was emotionally unavailable, which kept me doing so much, which fed my ego of like, oh, I love so hard and I'm so good. Right? All of that 
Like, and it did not prepare me to love myself deeply, right? And so when you get to the bottom of that wound, when you actually know, oh, it comes from this, right? I, I had my father lost both his legs in Vietnam. He, of course, he suffered from PTSD. My brother and I were both born after he lost his legs, right? So we would walk in the house some days. And if my father was broke or didn't have things going his way, you would say hello to him. And he'd just be like, mm. right? That part of understanding a relationship with a man early on taught me to be like, oh, well, I got to get his attention. I got to do the thing. I got to do it. Look at me, five, six, seven, eight. Look how good, like, you know, look how good I'm being for you, right? All of those things, right? And so ladies, we got to really be clear that we're not asking someone or we're not picking people who make us perform in the same way that we're actually inviting people, friends, lovers, uh, colleagues into our lives that are saying, who are you and how can I make you better? Right. And so that's a whole different conversation. So it's really changed um, my parenting. It's changed the way that I see my son, interact with my son, yeah. um, try to train him to be a whole emotional, emotionally succinct person that makes good choices and sees people as opportunities to be curious rather than people as transactional beings. I know this conversation is dope as hell. We gonna have, you know we're going to have to do another one of these. So. <laughs> <laughs> Before Instagram uh, pops this timer up and tells me I only got a couple minutes, um, let's talk about your event. It's tomorrow? It's tomorrow! Okay. Y'all got the ticket okay. to Vision Camp? Listen, Jay Lopez, people ain't got the ticket to Vision Camp right now. They need to get it, okay? I was going to post like a thirst trap in my story and then put the link. But do it. Do it. I love I it. I got to go work out twice today. I got you. This, <laughs> this is everybody, <laughs> right? Like, if you're a dude out there and you're like, oh, this must be for ladies, I can't get your butt a ticket to Vision Camp. You know what I'm saying? If you're a lady out there, if you're somebody out there who's like, oh, I don't have my vision quite together, who cares? Bring your post-its, bring your board, bring everything you got, and we're going to help you synthesize. Tomorrow, Vision Camp is noon to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is the most fun, the most hype you're ever going to be on Zoom. It is going to bring out the three core values of Steps and Stages Coaching, which are confidence, clarity, and community. We're going to build your confidence by getting you back to your intuitive self. We're going to clarify your vision so you leave there with a tangible in imagery of who it is you're trying to become and some tools to build the bridge from your current reality to your per preferred reality. And you're going to meet clients. You're going to build community with people that you haven't known because the quickest way to boost your transformation is to introduce yourself to a stranger. They are not judging you. They are just asking and being curious about who you want to become. And they're sparking your curiosity about yourself. So tomorrow's Vision Camp, get your ticket at ssvisioncamp.com. Or you can text the word camp to 857-663-7837. It is much less than you just spent on your prime day. So come on, get your ticket. There's we ain't got to talk about what they spent because they know they better be. Y'all better be there. <laughs> and if you get off this live and you look at your vision board, you're like, well, you know, I done heard enough on the live. I can just work on mine. You're not. You're not. You're not gonna, I'm telling you, like my uncle used to tell me, if you ain't got it now, you, you never go get it. So guess right. what? Exactly. You need to show up the vision camp. So right. I know y'all, Saturday, y'all probably plan to go get your pancakes and your mimosas. Put that off. Yes, yes. And for those of you who, who those of you who not disciplined enough to put that mimosa off, you get the replay for seven days. So get your ticket. So it's, vir and it's virtual, right? Virtual. You can drink your mimosa while you're at the vision camp. You can. Yes. Yeah. See? This works out. This works out. You got me inspired. I mean, I'm gonna have to pop up at this vision camp. Right? Really? Come through, Jay Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> Come through. You know, and like, hey, I just want to tell people, you know, if you really want to bring your mimosa, you should get a VIP ticket so you can meet with me an hour before. Bring, bring, bring me one too. That. See, look, look. Okay, I know we got like five more minutes. Let me. Anybody got any questions while we all here? Because. Whenever there are no questions, I know it's like a good ass live. Because everybody's <laughs> just like, dang, all of this is <laughs> all of this. Someone said, I, I think I'm ready to start a business. Damn. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. If you got the LLC and didn't go any further, you need to come to the vision. You, you do, you do, because the status and the title are not the vision. All right? Let's go. Let's create it. Let's get it together. Bring it. You're ready to write a book. You're ready to change your life. You're ready to be a better person just for you. You're ready to stop checking all the boxes and getting more degrees and certifications. Trust me, I'm a tenured professor. I got the degrees, but they don't make who I am. They can't do anything towards this work. 
This is the, we don't call it hard work, but it is head work that trickles into heart work and puts your hands to work to create the life you would love. All right, so one more, one more question. Looking back to where, where you are before you actually took the steps to get to where you are right now, which yeah. is in an, an amazing place. Yeah. Uh, looking back, what's one thing you would have no wish you would have known early on that would have just saved you a bunch of time, frustration, and disappointment? Mm -hmm. Okay, one thing I wish I would have known is that what I do, everybody can't do it. I wish I had known that. I what do you mean? I just thought that my intuitive gifts were like, other people just don't bring it out. I just bring it out. Other people can do what I do, but they just don't. I thought it was a choice. It's not a choice, right? Everything that I know about the world is not what everybody else knows. Everybody doesn't understand catalyst and transformation the way I do it. Everyone cannot think, th think of something and bring their imagination to a stage, put it out there, and people buy tickets and want to watch it. Everybody doesn't have the, the synthesis to bring their ideas out of their mouth. Right, just the linguistic synthesis of ideas doesn't happen for everyone. And I would think it was normal, right? Because I'd be doing it in dance classes and I'd be talking to my students and they'd be like, oh my God, Miss Crystal, like this, this class is a whole podcast. And I'd be like, oh yeah, okay, thanks, babe. Have a good day. I thought that it was normal, right? Biggest mistake I've ever made, biggest mistake I made continually over and over in, with all of my gifts is thinking that they were normal. So I'm going to invite you right now. I don't care what it is you do. It's not normal. Normal, what I wanted to be normal was the worst two years of my life. I felt like I was on a Jerry Springer episode. And I really fell on my knees and said, Lord, I'm so sorry I asked you to make me normal. I, I won't do that again. So you need to be very clear. Don't make the mistake that the thing that you do is everybody else is already doing it. It doesn't matter. Right? There are much better dancers in the world than me, but they can work for five or six icons. They didn't get, th that door didn't open for them because they didn't have the other gifts and talents to make that synthesis later on and offer everything to the world. Your gift has good in it for others. And if you can't see it in others, that's the key that you need to push harder. Stop downplaying your potential. Stop I said, it. I said Stop. what I said. I said what I said. I said what I said. All right. <laughs> <laughs> let me see if I can let me let me let me see if I can post a thirst trap in a couple hours once I go hit these uh, arms and I'll post a link so they can you know what I'm saying y'all ain't gonna see nothing there it's gonna be straight vision camps okay when y'all see the muscles click on the link yeah I don't know how to promote any other way Wait, apparently the regular flyers don't get anything get so I'll show some, yeah I'll show some skin that'll okay. work all right, this has been great. This has been great. We're going to do this again. I know. You, so you said, Jake, you have something else you're getting ready, you're, you want to put out soon as well, right? Yeah, we're going to get the 30-day devotional out. It's called Steps and Stories um, from the Steps and Stages platform. Just stories about my life with a little bit of, you know, check-in time in the book so people can just read the story and, and rewrite their own story. Okay. All right, y'all, make sure y'all follow her. This has been great. We're going to tap back in. Have fun at the Vision Camp, y'all. All right, see you soon. Thank you, Jay. Likewise.